Okay, Trump week on a Wednesday. Tim Apicella, Cynthia Sinclair, let's go. First thing is Thomas Friedman, the New York Times. Trump must be impeached any other way. And, and the whole world knows that a candidate in the United States is subject to uh, assistance and manipulation uh, from foreign countries. He's been doing it on a regular basis. Uh, this is awful, not only because um, it skews the result of the vote, but because the winning candidate who has taken this kind of favor, I use that term advisedly, from a foreign country is beholden to the foreign country. There is a quid pro quo there. And so you never know if your president's really your president. Does he belong to you or does he belong to them? Take a look. Thomas Friedman in his column in today's New York mm -hmm. Times. Um, the other thing I just want to mention is, is that we're getting into a kind of rhythm over gun violence in this country. It's not every day, it's every other day. And you can, you can make a chart, it must be going up like that. And all these deaths, and, and there was uh, the shooting involving a kosher deli uh, yesterday, and the, uh, the police chief in New Jersey, or was it the governor, and some official in New Jersey said, this is, this is a, uh, an anti-Semitic killing. This, this, is, this is a bigotry. And um, my God, we're having it every day with the guns in various places in the country. It's not one place, it's all over the place. No place is exempt, okay? And on the backdrop of that is Congress is doing, how do I say this, nada, rien, nothing. Congress is doing nothing. And so it's uh, kind of interesting that the Democrats now support a new trade agreement. Uh, they call it a miracle negotiation between the U.S. and Mexico. What's that all about? We're in the throes of an impeachment process that's white hot. Why are the Democrats now making, making love, if you will, with Trump? Anybody have an answer for me on that one? Because they don't want to look like all they do is impeachment, because yeah. that's what they've been being accused yeah, tactical of. tactical error. They're trying to show that they're doing more than just impeachment, which is dumb. It's really the Senate that's not doing anything. It, you know, the House has sent them more than 100, 200 and some odd, I think, bills that they have sent, bipartisan bills yeah. that the Senate will not take Not up. a smart move. What do you think? I agree completely. Yeah. Uh, they've got to get their attention off the impeachment. That's why they want to wrap this up before Christmas, get the vote in. Um, and they don't want to be seen and perceived by all voters, not even in the red states, but also the blue states, the purple states, that they're not fixated on impeachment. That, that's how they won the 2018 election in Congress, in the House, right. based, on, based on policies and, and things that matter to the, the voter. I hope you're right. And I hope it has that desired effect. But frankly, uh, you could take that uh, to say that Trump is being reasonable. Uh, not so much the Democrats are being reasonable, but Trump is being reasonable. So he's an OK guy. All we have to do, Democrats, is negotiate with him, and we'll have reasonable results. The problem is it's a distraction on both sides. And I'm really, I, I don't think Nancy Pelosi's uh, uh, strategy was any good on this. We have to focus on, you know, on what Thomas Friedman had to say. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about, let's talk about um, you know, the in, in, Inspector General report. Because I, I'd like to sort of preface that by saying, is that really important? Or is the impeachment it's a the distraction, top of the agenda? Jay? How many months have we been at this table? How many months? knowing full well whether it be the Mueller report or any kind of impeachment discussion, inquiry, and now vote, potential vote, that we knew Donald Trump was going to do something to distract the attention away from this. Need we say more? Is it coincidental that this, this report's coming out exactly at the time that this is being looked at, this vote is going to take place? It's a distraction. And we've been talking about it. We predicted it. And here it is. Well, he's controlling the agenda in the media. Uh, and then with, with William Barr and a ridiculous remark about how he doesn't accept the inspector general, and then Trump uh, putting down the FBI yet still again. I mean, it's destroying the credibility of the organization and the federal government in general. Um, I, I just do not understand. There's no benefit. It's a lie. It's just one of his many lies every day. Um, and at the same time, it's the top of the agenda. If I was mainstream media, I wouldn't pay attention to any of it. The issue, the story is he's being impeached, this as a, he should be impeached. This is a historical moment. It is, they, lest we forget. 
And now we, forget. you know, we've had other presidents impeached, but not for this kind of stuff. Right. So this is truly a historical moment. And you're right, the, the, the media should be focused predominantly upon that. I, I agree. You know, what I've seen, too, the Republicans are saying over and over is that the, the Russia thing would not have even happened, right, if um, they didn't, if it wasn't for these FISA warrants. That was a little bit of a mistake from that, right? And That's ridiculous. But really what the, the report has said, that there was no sign of impropriety. There was no sign of bias against Trump. None of that. So in a way, I think it's kind of good that it's coming out right now, even though the Republicans are twisting it to fit what their narrative well, is and what they want to say. It's the same thing say. as Barr's comments after the exactly. Mueller report. Right. He lied about what was in the Mueller report, right. he's and he's lying. lying about what the Inspector General has to say. Yes. And furthermore, the, the, the Pfizer uh, affidavit or motion, whatever it was, um, was after the investigation started. Right. The in inspector general was supposed to see if the initiation of the investigation was bona fide. Well, he did. It was bona fide. No question. No question at all. Never really a question. And Trump is raising this kind of crazy deep state conspiracy thing when he has nothing to back it up. But him and Barr together make these statements. And here's the part. You're not going to be surprised, and I tell you, there are people who believe these lies on a regular basis. That's why I'm wearing my pin today. This is, this is a pin that Andrew Yang wears, the, the, the Democratic uh, candidate. Okay? He wears, and he always wears, you have to, can you see it? Math. Wait, let me show pin. Math, M-A-T-H. At first, I thought, well, math, it stands for mathematics, and he wants to have everybody go to school and study math. That's not it at all. Math stands for make America think harder. That's why I got the pin, not for Yang, but for the, the notion of make America think harder. I thought if you take the T out, it's mad as hell. <laughs> so I know we're, gonna take it we're not taking more. <laughs> okay, what do we got here? So um, let's see, oh, trade agreement, go ahead. Well, I'm sorry, but we're kind of guilty of what we just accused the media of doing, and that was not talking about this impeachment, this historical moment. Okay. I'm sorry. I want to talk about where, Goldman and Castro. Where and... are we in the impeachment? Okay, look at, okay, so when we got to this point, we said, how many articles are there going to be? And we said, are they going to bring in the Mueller stuff? Are they going to talk about the obstruction from Mueller? And we, we debated that, and we said, well, maybe not. And, you know, and we said, no, they're going to go to the simple. The simple articles of impeachment. And so let's, for historical sake, let's talk about what those are. One is abuse of government, and the other one is um, obstruction of Congress. Can't be any smaller than that. Could be one item, but it's two items and as simple as pie. Well, and now the question is, is, the question is, is the American public going to understand it? I think that's their main goal, isn't it? To keep it simple so that people can understand it? And that's why they decided to keep it, just those two. But if you look into exactly what they list under abuse of power, it talks about all of the Ukraine stuff, all of the telephone calls, you know, removing Yovanovitch, um, the different uh, witnesses that came in, the ambassadors that came in and said what he did and that there was a quid pro quo and all of those things are in it. But that you hear the Republicans sit there and say, well, what happened to bribery and, you know, and all of this other stuff when it's mm -hmm. really just these two. And it's like, well, if you read into what those two are, that's what they did. They put it in underneath abuse of power. So we're now in a process of the markup, right? right? Both sides get to look at it and mark it up as if there were anything else. This is the part of the process. Mm -hmm. To what degree do we get through the markup process and how long does that protract? Any guesses? So they're having debate on it, like I mean, today, this, tomorrow. Yeah. Right. And um, well, you know, McConnell has come out and said he's not going to do it until after the first of the year. There will be no trial in the Senate until well after the first of the year, and until maybe even this next report comes out from Durham about the IG stuff and the Russia stuff. Well, let's go back to the, the skinny versus the broad thing. Uh, you know, I think part of Nancy's strategy. Uh, is that she doesn't want to confuse people with, mm -hmm. with other claims, uh, bribery, for example. Um, th that's a two-edged sword, because uh, you know, they, they, they could say, well, good, let's, we'll focus on the, the ones that are clear. Let's focus on those. There's lots of evidence. We all saw the evidence. But they, 
They could also say, and it depends on where you start out from, where your original loyalty is here. They could also say, well, they didn't claim bribery, so he didn't, he's not guilty of bribery and all these other things. He's not guilty of that. He's not guilty of the obstruction that was reported in Mueller's report, because that's outside of the current obstruction in the course of this impeachment. You know? So he gets he skates on that. And I think, I think that some people, depending on where they're coming from, will say, well, he's been exonerated. Yeah. But they bring in that in there, though. It's part of the abuse of power. Um, is that whole part about Russia and that it is a pattern of behavior. And that's a very big part of their abuse of power, is that this is not just a one isolated incident. It is a pattern of behavior. Well, I hope there's evidence on that. I don't know where that, I don't know where that would come from, yeah. because it was not present in the impeachment hearing. <clears throat> how, okay, let's talk about that. Now. How useful was the Goldman versus um, Castor hearings that we had? In your opinion, did you watch that enough to say, was it clear to the person watching at home on the points of evidence and the, you know, the rebuttal to the points of evidence? Um, the, her, the thing I got most out of it was this was valid evidence, whereas, of course, you, we know the Republicans saying it's not valid evidence. <coughs> so, I mean, did that, are we still in our silos and we hear what we want to hear? Of course. And both sides hear what they want to hear. It doesn't matter how uh, valid I, the facts are. No, I, you know, I disagree with that. I mean, it sounds like, you know, balanced reporting. Both sides are in their silos. Uh -huh. I don't think the Democrats are in their silos. I think the Republicans want to paint them that way. The people who were in the silos are the Republicans. I'm, I'm afraid to say, you know, everything they say is, is a liar, a distortion. Mm -hmm. If you look at those hearings that took place over the past couple of weeks, if you look at the statements they've made this week, if you look at the statements they're going to make in the debate now to follow uh, in the, I guess, the Judiciary Committee and in, on the floor, mm -hmm. um, you're going to find they're lying like crazy, mis mischaracterizing. Um, a lot of disinformation, it, it, it's going to be terrible. And it's going to make you sick to listen to it. The Democrats are not like that at all. Yeah. The Democrats are straight shooters. I, you know, I don't know why people say, well, you're going to look at both point. sides. Yeah, you know, good, both point. Side. Yeah. good point. Yeah. So I think that is a point. We haven't seen any poll data lately, have we? It's no, unusually but, uh, quiet right now, isn't it? <clears throat> it is. I, I've seen two references to polls over the past few days. One reference uh, was that as the impeachment hearings have gone on, Trump has actually gained in support. And I saw another one uh, where the reference was that he is losing in support. Okay. So I would, I would say it nets itself yes. out. Yeah. And it's probably no big effect either way. Um, on the other hand, let me offer this thought to you guys, is that the public is a strange animal. The public does not necessarily reflect in polls um, immediately. Sometimes it takes weeks, months even, for it to all settle in, for them to talk to each other, you know, meet at the coffee shop, whatever they do to, to sort of solidify. I hope they do that. I hope they don't just go by social media and, and, and learn what they know from Twitter. That would be really bad, or Fox News. Um, so I, but I think we haven't really seen the effect yet of this <laughs> event, this this. This whole um, uh, this whole process on how people feel it's still you know it's still happening. The other thing is um, you know some of these some of these uh, uh, TV uh, news ser series are as I said quote balanced and they and they seem to sit on the sidelines and watch it as if it was very far away and oh boys will be boys there they go fighting again you know but that's really not what's happening. Read the Friedman article. A country is being taken apart every day. I fully believe that. And it's going to affect everybody in the country. Don't people realize that? It's not just a football game half a, half a continent away. It's happening to us, all of us, to our government. It's the worst thing that's ever happened in my life in, in terms of well, the relationship <laughs> of citizens and government. Isn't that an argument for conducting this impeachment in the first place? Even though it may be... A disadvantage, if, you know, when it comes down time for the election, but isn't wasn't that the priority or the, the the principle that this impeachment was supposed to answer is that this was an affront on the rule of law and our constitution, and to what degree is that being emphasized? Well, a little bit, but not a whole lot. No, that's why the three of us recommended to Nancy that she go ahead with the impeachment. 
I'm so uh, glad she listened she to probably it. Went, you probably went on the well, remember, of recommendations. <laughs> I originally said censored, remember? <laughs> remember well, I did censored. Some censor. Democrats, I read this Now they're going back to that again. They're going back to that. Yes. The censure is not going to work. No. In fact, it's, it's going to embolden him further. The whole thing, everything that happens emboldens him further. The country is at great risk. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, well, for the record, I don't know what camera around my but for the record, I came on board late. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> you guys were ahead of me on that one, I fully admit it, and I came on late. Well, but I, your question is very good. Is so where's the stress? Where's the emphasis? Where's the emphasis in these hearings? Because, you know, Republicans get plenty of time to make their rhetoric, and it's all BS, uh, in my opinion. Um, and so, uh, you know, where, where's the agenda now? The agenda's all mushed up. The priorities are, are, are not clear anymore. It's not clear, for example, that you've got to do impeachment in order to save the country. It's not a joke. It's not remote. It's real. It's happening. And, and it's not some kind of hit job. It's not some well, kind of political, we're just trying no, to take this guy out because we don't that's like him. Defense. Okay, well, that's the whole saying. thing. Let's admit, this is a public relations war. Yes. And well, yes. on one side, they're painting it as a hit job. You just said it. Right. Okay, so who's winning the public relations war on this? I hate to say it. I don't think it's the Democrats. Even though they look better during the hearings, but the spin after the hearings um, seems to be taking, well, taking the better, you know. Even in the hearings, they come, you know, the Republicans come up with this stuff, and you don't see the Democrats saying what I think they need to say. Furthermore, it's the press. The press, you know, we live or die. The, the nation, the republic lives or dies by how the press reports this. If the press goes soft on it, and I mean the, you know, all the media, that's why I think Fox uh, News is such an insult to our, our democracy, because it doesn't tell the truth, and because people listen to it, and they're part of the public conversation, and they create <clears throat> and, and, and support public opinion, even if it's wrong, just to get eyeballs. And, and the press is looking for eyeballs, mm -hmm. and um, you know all the press really, and looking for advertisers. So much advertisement go on, goes on around these uh, news news programs. So I'm um, query whether the, the press is accurately reporting what needs to be said here. And of course, people on both sides of the fence, they're really dependent on the press. I'm not going to sit and look at this hearing all day. I'm not going to make notes about what they said. Uh, mostly, I'm going to listen to the press afterward, and how the press puts it affects public opinion. Are they doing a good job? I'll I tell you later. Yeah. I don't. To be yeah. honest, I really don't. I, all in the name of looking fair and impartial, they're letting facts that aren't true be put repeated. forth. And repeated, repeated and repeated. And repeated. Now, I like watching Chris Cuomo, because when the Republicans come on and start to... to he likes to do that, doesn't he? he? Yeah. And instead of letting them continue to put forth this false narrative, he says, wait, 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 you don't get to come on my show and lie. That's not true. And he calls them on it. But I don't see that happening on the other shows. I don't see people getting called down for the fact that they're lying. And, you know, and that's what would happen well, that with is Castor, the job of the same thing. That is the job of the press, to call out facts that aren't facts. Right. Or at least question it and say, where did you get your, you know, how did you come to this conclusion? It's right. not happening. Right. Well, you know, I, I, I feel I have a mixed bag about Chris Cuomo. I mean, he, he, gives, them, he gives them the floor. He, he gives them the opportunity to do their thing. And then he, he wants to show you what a great cross-examiner he is. But it's about him and, and them. Uh, it's, it's, and, and I'm really tired of listening to them. I, I don't think they should get any time at all. That's just me. Um, but but I, I enjoy Rachel or Rachel Maddow much more. Because she researches it and she comes up. She tells you what they've said on the record, right. and then she comes up with her answer. So um, what, is, what is going to happen here? So uh, what's going to happen from this point forward in, in the House? And, and you said that we're not going to have a trial until next year. Uh, when? In the Senate, well, after the first of the year is what he said. Yeah. Hey, after you after know, the, the holidays season. and all. Right. And, but Nancy has said that she's going to maybe even as soon as next week. Bring a vote in the House. The house. Yeah, yeah, she said that, and that, uh, knock wood, that'll probably happen. Mm -hmm. And then we'll all trundle off to a long Christmas vacation and come back <laughs> in sometime in, I don't know when they come back, but it'll be middle January already. Mm -hmm. And now we're mm, 10 months away from Election Day. And uh, the job of the Republicans uh, and Trump 
is to A, distract, and B, which they will do, promise. Because when, when there's a moment of quiet, they'll come in with all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Who knows what it'll be? South America, Asia, Europe, who knows what it'll be? Economics, look, look immigration. Look for North Korea, because that's bubbling North up. North Korea. Yeah, that's bubbling up. Anything and everything to show that he's on it, you yeah. know? Uh, uh, you know I'm I sorry, I'm, getting, I'm, I'm, I'm losing my lunch. So, um, you haven't had lunch yet. You can't so lose if something you, you didn't were, if, <laughs> if you were... <laughs> breakfast. Okay. If, if, you, if you were uh, Trump and McConnell, uh, I guess what we're saying is you would put this off. Because in the end, they stand a very good chance of not getting, of, of acquitting, uh, acquittal in the Senate. Um, assume that, when's the best time for acquittal? Well, it's probably in October or September or October. Yeah. Right before. When Trump can yes. trumpet this and say, oh, I've been exonerated. It was all a witch hunt. See, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm completely innocent. And the Democrats are really bad people. <clears throat> And so the idea is to fix a day, a specific day on the calendar when this would work best. You think that maybe McConnell and Trump are talking about that? Oh, yes. 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 And do you oh, think yes. that McConnell in the Senate is capable, are capable of kicking this football down the road, this can down the road to achieve exactly the day they want? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, they, they get to set the rules. The Senate sets the rules yeah. for the way that... Um, hearing will proceed. Yeah. So, well, this whole thing's been positioned that the Democrats want to get this thing done soon because the election's coming, and so they want to speed it up. And that's why this isn't fair because it's speedy, and uh, we know it's speedy because we can't get the witnesses to testify. Right. We can't get the documents through subpoena. Right. That's why it's speedy. I don't think this is so speedy. I mean, the Republicans are always saying, "Oh, you're rushing us." They're rushing. You know, they're saying you're rushing us, and then they're not cooperating. Well, in this case, uh, they're dragging it out because it's going to be, I think, right. advantageous to do so. Right, and, and right. Nancy says, "Oh, we're not, we're not really rushing," but I don't think she's made that point effectively. Yeah, uh, I think this this could have been a lot faster. The guy has done, you know, terrible, awful things, nefarious things that have come out for sure, and we're really not moving fast enough. Yeah. And they haven't just hurt us; they've hurt Ukraine also. Because, I mean, they had to sit down with Putin, and his position was markedly weakened because of it. Yeah. Right? I mean, he just, and instead of Pompeo or somebody from America being there to help them, well, nobody was there. Trump is a compromised president, my yeah. point of earlier. He's somehow been compromised, and he is favoring an enemy every yes, time. Every you time look, you turn around. It all leads back to Russia. Yeah. So let's go back to the actual hearing in the Senate. You know, they've said they're going to call Biden and his son as witnesses. This has very, very little to do <laughs> with the actual impeachment. Um, what's going to happen there? I mean, th those guys are going to line it up so that it's not going to be the same. Now, one, one point that a story in the Times made, I'd like to pose to both of you, is this. Um, they said that it's a problem for Trump in the Senate because um, he can't if, if the Senate wants his documents, if the Senate wants his witnesses in the White House, those people, the same people who refused to show up or provide documents in the House, um, it's very hard for him to say, I'm not cooperating. Because then it looks like he's obstructing the, the, the Senate, Senate too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, if he says, well, I, I don't think I'll come down and participate in this. It's all hogwash. Uh, I think it's harder for him to say that in the Senate. Yeah. So the question is, what's going to happen? Maybe the Senate, tr McConnell, tries to find a way around that by not calling any of those witnesses, by not seeking any of those documents. Right. That's um, what he's going to do. And, I think that's I, what he's going to do. I do, yeah. too. Because yeah. it's the thing we talked about just before we went on air. Never, an attorney should never ask a question they don't have the answer to <laughs> before that witness gets in front of a camera mm -hmm. My gut, or a jury. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I don't think he knows what any of those witnesses would say under, you know, if the Democrats had a chance at him. And that's why it's just safer not to get him on the, quote unquote, the stand. That's going to be really interesting. And the rules are going to be interesting. You know, I think the Democrats bent over backward to make fair rules, right. allow the Republicans a lot of room. Mm -hmm. um, and then the Republicans took advantage of that, in my opinion. So what's the rules in the Senate are going to be determined by the Senate, aren't they? They'll be hard. Right? They'll be hard and harsh. And they'll just go, 
That's how it is. Yeah. And Imagine they'll get away with it. And they'll get away with it. I'm yeah. telling you. Where are you going to go? But remember, I'm trying to think back. In the actual trial, okay, they do have a judge. Yes. In the actual John Roberts. trial, Robert it's Kent. Roberts. And, uh, you know, Roberts is not completely predictable as a, as a Trumper on this. He may not be a, a full tilt Trumper in, that, in the course of that trial. That'll be a lot of pressure on him to make yeah. obviously biased moves in, in presiding over that trial. Mm -hmm. Wow, that'll be interesting. But, but it will also be structured to avoid an acquittal at all costs, to avoid a conviction at all costs. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so where are we? Let's connect the dots here. Where are we here? We're three years post. Um, we are in a complete tumult in the world. Um, but the economy is good, and he is pounding on that. Um, and we haven't heard much about immigration lately, and we should, because I, you know... It's still happening, a 16-year-old boy just died. There was an article in the paper about uh, some judge in El Paso uh, stopped the wall. He said it was in, inappropriate to use mm -hmm. military construction money, including military construction money from projects here in Hawaii. Uh, for the wall, because that was uh, a violation of the power of the purse and separation of powers. Right. Um, but but um, where are we? I, 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 something you mentioned earlier, Tim, we're, we're kind of in a confusion here. We've got so much going on, so many things are happening that even us guys are, you know, barraged. And it's hard to keep yourself clear on this. What is really happening? Where is it going? It's like an amoeba with a hundred... Pseudopods. <laughs> I use that word as well. <laughs> I love that. Um, well, I think by design. I think by design. These tweets are coming out, you know, in, just in huge volumes. And how can anyone cover it? And I think that's the problem with the press, is that they're trying to cover everything. They're not just trying to select that which, you know, what is the most newsworthy story of the day. They're covering everything, including... If you remember last night, the Hershey, Pennsylvania um, rally. I mean, we're spending a lot of time on that. And he lied through the whole thing. Uh, yes, but Sorry. the point is, the point is, they're covering <laughs> things that maybe are human interest stories, like how that you know how the guards were too politically correct and escorting that woman out of the of the pavilion. Who cares? We're in the middle of an impeachment. Let's talk about the impeachment, I, not I you know Trump at the podium and making hay with calling the FBI scum and. You know, that the, the guards are too PC. and The press is covering human interest stories within this political environment. I know that gets readership. I know that gets people to click on. And, but they're not doing their job properly, in my opinion. Well taken. How much of what he said do you agree with, Cynthia? Most all of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're easy. Because they don't think they're doing a good enough job of it of talking about the things that are important. I even switched off of, I was watching MSNBC the other day, and they were in the middle of, um, was it Burke? Barry Burke, the guy who was um, questioning the two lawyers, right? And it was a really important part of questioning, and they switch to the IG report. And I'm like, ah, well, I don't want to hear what that says. I want to hear what these guys are saying. Because I thought that both Castor and... Um, Goldman. And Goldman were really important. And, they were. And the way they conducted themselves and the answers that they gave spoke volumes about what's really going on here. They caught Castor in three separate lies that he said during his beginning part, right? Mm -hmm. And out of his 45 minute opening statement, seven minutes were on substantive matters yeah. of facts. The rest of it was all process. Close. The audiences are getting burned out. That's why we're seeing a variety of coverage on the, you know, the Manini, if you will. They're getting burned out. They can't handle it all like the Nixon days. The, the attention span of the American public has diminished. And the press. Yeah. Okay, we're going to be off for a few weeks. We'll come back at the beginning of the year, yeah? Be a different world. It'd be a different world. Make notes. Tim Mappicella. Thank you, Jay. Cynthia Sinclair. Thanks, Jay. I love you guys. Happy holidays. Love you too. Happy holidays. Yeah. Yeah. Merry Aloha. Christmas. Aloha. Aloha. Aloha.